Very, very good. Mr. Christian Morthy. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Himes, for unearthing evidence of free snacks at the NSA. Uh, we'll be visiting shortly, um, General Nakasone. Um, my first question is directed to uh, Director Ray. Uh, Mr. Ray, you've said that TikTok, uh, the uh, popular app on people's phones, is, quote, a tool that is ultimately within the, within the control of the Chinese government, and it screams out with national security concerns, close quote. Uh, we found that TikTok and ByteDance employees regularly engage in a practice called heating, close in quotes, heating, a manual push that ensures specific videos, quote, achieve a certain number of video views. Mr. Ray, can you rule out that TikTok is heated content at the direction of the CCP? I don't think we could rule that out. Can you, um, now let me just talk about another instance uh, of uh, what I think is very problematic behavior at TikTok and ByteDance, their parent company. In December of last year, ByteDance confirmed it used TikTok to monitor US journalists' physical location using their IP addresses in an attempt to identify whether they had been located by ByteDance employees. Can you rule out that this data was also shared with the CCP? I don't think we could rule that out. Could the CCP use TikTok uh, to shape political opinion, such as to inform the Amer misinform the American public? That What you just described there is one of the concerns that we have, namely that the control of the recommendation algorithm could be used to conduct influence operations. And much along the lines of your first two questions, it's important to understand that that's not something that would be easily detected or ruled out, as you say. Uh, and that's just one of the several uh, security concerns that we have about TikTok. Thank you. Uh, Director Haynes, recently my staff described to me a term called Guangzi. Apparently, Guangzi is a Chinese term uh, that refers to a part of Chinese culture where uh, people develop personal trust and a strong relationship uh, that can involve moral obligations and exchange of favors. And they suggested in the press, there's been suggestions that Guangxi has developed between Chairman Xi and Vladimir Putin. Let me ask you this question. Um, do we have any evidence that in Chairman Xi's calculations of potentially providing military assistance to uh, Russia in Ukraine, that he has ever discussed, or he has discussed among his uh, internal a cadre's potential assistance by Russia to China and the PRC in a potential invasion of Taiwan. Thank you, Congressman. I think maybe we could uh, discuss this in closed session. Okay, very good. Um, General Barrier, uh, I wanna talk to you about something called peace disease, which has, uh, uh, Chairman Xi has talked about repeatedly in his speeches recently. This is what a former general of the Central Military Commission and the PRC has described as peace disease. He said, quote, today the PLA hasn't been in actual combat for many years, yet the fires of war are burning throughout the world. In this area, the gap between the PLA and foreign militaries is growing day by day. And then he closes with the quote, this is an actual problem, close quote. This was a quote from a 2009 speech by the uh, general uh, of the Shenyang military region. This term, peace disease, uh, refers to supposedly a lack of combat readiness on the part of the PLA, has appeared 565 times in the PLA daily between 2012 and mid-2018, and just recently Xi Jinping said he wants to cure the peace disease. How do you assess when Chairman Xi would know that the peacetime disease has been cured and that their troops are ready for combat? I'm not sure that we could actually put a, a, a fixed date on that. We know there are a few dates out there, like 2027, 2035, and 2049. And, and we know that his, his leaders don't have the kind of combat experience uh, that, say, the, the American uh, military uh, leaders have. So we, we think that this is in his mind and perhaps shapes the way that he thinks about, about the readiness of his force. And we could probably go into a few more details on that in a closed session. Very good. Uh, Director Burns, I wanted to ask you a question about threats from ChatGPT, but I just couldn't think of any. So I went to ChatGPT and I said, ask question of CIA Director Burns about threats from ChatGPT. It said, 
Director Burns, what measures is the CIA taking to monitor and mitigate potential risks associated with the use of AI language models like ChatGPT? And how would you uh, prevent uh, AI language models uh, not to be used by malicious actors to spread false information or influence public opinion? That's from my pal, ChatGPT. Sure, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to give you an example which um, I'm sure ChatGPT is very well aware of, and that is that you know, if you assume, say, a foreign in, an adversarial intelligence service where English is not the first language, and they're thinking about ways in which they could come up with compelling spear phishing messages, it's logical to use artificial intelligence of one, one kind or another to produce a message that can be pretty effective in spear phishing and therefore in taking advantage of vulnerabilities. Um, and so what we're working on with colleagues across the intelligence community are ways of identifying you know, when that kind of spear phishing effort is being made using artificial intelligence by a foreign adversary. Thank you.